So as mad as this might sound, there are some games out there that want to make you so angry and frustrated with them that they make you quit. It's weird because surely the whole point of a game is that you enjoy playing it and that you want to play even more, right? As it turns out, that's not always the case. Games that have reputations for being especially hard or unusually cruel often get both cult followings or an extra dose of hype, and it's not without reason. People like to feel like they're good at games, and that feeling is all the more rewarding when you win at a game that's renowned for making plenty of players quit before they got to that point. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video games that wanted you to rage quit. Number 10. Cuphead It's fair to say that, in terms of popular genres, the run-and-gun bullet hell-style shooter often falls into the background. After all, the fact that these games generally have to exist on a 2D plane often means that they can feel lacking in either graphics or gameplay, which can put many off. Then stepped in Cuphead in 2017, drastically changing modern perceptions about the limitations of this type of game. It was still as devilishly hard as the likes of Contra, for sure, but its delightful cartoon presentation meant that you could easily underestimate it at points. Because the cutesy graphics don't change the fact that this game is hard. Better yet, it's hard in a type of way that a lot of gamers aren't acclimated to, like an RPG or first-person shooter, and so it presents challenges that most simply aren't immediately prepared for. If you finished all the bosses of this game first time, then you're either a wizard, a cheater, or a being from the eighth dimension, as it's simply one of those games that you have to smash your face into until you learn where you're going wrong. Number 9. XCOM Enemy Unknown now, people usually rage at XCOM for a very, very specific reason, and that's that it actually uses statistics, which makes it unexpectedly quite confusing. Because if you have, say, a 50% chance of hitting a shot, that doesn't mean 1 in 2, it means 50% every time, so if you fire several bullets, the chance of them all hitting decreases. This is combined with the fact that on higher difficulties, the game prevents you from save-scumming your way to the best results, making things even more frustrating. If you miss a shot in a desperate situation, you can't just cheekily go back and retry your luck because the exact same rounds will still end up missing. And while you can adapt to this, it's still enough to make anyone who doesn't find out these details more than a little confused or even angry at the game. Internet forums are rife with people trying to figure out if the game is actively using the statistic element of the game against them with varying degrees of anger. Now, XCOM doesn't want you to quit, but it's also not going to hold your hand while you're forced to learn maths again through it. And if that makes you have to flee it for a time, well, the game understands. Stands. Number 8. Blockstorm if you want to 100% the various achievements that Blockstorm provides, you actually need to rage quit. Quitting soon after or immediately after you die will net you the suitably named Rage Quit Trophy. The only issue with this is that it's unclear whether you definitely want it, given that it appears like a badge of dishonor more than anything else. You could argue you got it to get all the achievements, or just by mere happenstance, but for all intents and appearances, it looks like you just got really, really mad at the game. But if you're committed, it's a sacrifice your life likely willing to make, even if it makes you look like somebody who loses their mind whenever they lose. Hilariously, Steam suggests that roughly 40% of players have gotten this achievement, which actually suggests that a whole lot of players weren't getting this one just for 100% completion. But to be fair, when the game sort of rewards you for it, you can't totally blame anyone who did. Number 7. Red Dead Redemption now, Red Dead Redemption is an unusual addition to the roster of games that want you to quit in that it doesn't want you to quit the main story. No, they want you to get into that role of a cowboy as much as you possibly can, even the more immoral aspects this role can have. This is why, should you lose hardcore at the in-game poker that you can play, you're given the ability to decide to stop everyone's fun in its tracks by getting out your gun and just straight up murdering everyone at the table. It's the mark of a sore loser, but it's also something you'll likely end up doing even if you only do it to reload your previous save and begin again. It's hilarious that there's a game where you're allowed to rage quit another game within it. It's like some sort of weird angry gamer version of Inception gone wrong, but in all fairness, the game doesn't exactly teach you to be real good at poker, and it does teach you to be real good at shooting. It's an inevitable outcome in the end. Number 6. You Don't Know Jack now, You Don't Know Jack is a surprisingly entertaining game, even though I definitely have to sue for likenesses on the box art cover there. I mean, that is me. That is my egg head. But I digress. It is definitely an entertaining game, although often in ways you don't expect it to be. For example, the game actively notices when you've given up on trying to properly answer questions and punishes you accordingly for it. For example, each time you answer a question by telling the game to, well, F off, the host gets increasingly mad at you until you finally curse one third and final time. Aware that you've more or less totally quit trying to even guess answers, you'll then just be kicked out of the game you're in, taking you back to the desktop. 
Now, it's a fair punishment because, I mean, after all, you've been told twice to cut it out, but you can't help but think that you don't know Jack sort of wants you to do this at least once. You don't code an elaborate extra route of a quiz game that makes you actually leave the game without wanting to see someone fall foul of it at least once, or twice, or okay, three times, none of us are perfect. Number 5. Undertale should you pick the genocide route for the whimsical yet very dark Undertale, where you just murder every single person you come across for the entire game, even if they give you the option to stop, the story will quickly turn against you, and with some fairly good reason. After all, it's pretty clear that you are the new villain of this adventure, since nobody else is running around the monster's world leaving a monumental path of death and destruction in their wake. With this in mind, you're given the hardest boss in the game to overcome in order to finish this playthrough, Sans. While a lovable lazy skeleton in any other playthrough, he quickly shows his true deadly colours in this one, after revealing that he is the only other person aware of the fact that you can use saves, and is thus aware that, by being an insanely difficult boss, he might convince you to just give up, since killing you once stops nothing. As such, the fight is legitimately insanely difficult, throwing in just about every fighting mechanic that you've ever seen before, generally with two or three appearing at the same time, but since you've murdered a whole cast of friendly faces, you sort of deserve this encouragement to rage quit entirely. Number 4. I Wanna Be The Guy Now, in all due fairness, I Wanna Be The Guy is a game you go into knowing that it wants to make you suffer. It's infamous as being one of the hardest platformers ever birthed and spawning countless diabolical spawn in its wake. I Wanna Be The Guy takes the malicious aspect of fan-made Mario ROMs and makes it a legitimate game. Hidden traps, secret weapons, and levels that are put together just to sabotage you, nothing is considered too cheap for this series to employ. And you know what? That isn't a bad thing. In fact, the whole thing feels like it's purposely made to spite you only means that your eventual victory feels absolutely sweet. However, that's only if you get that far, as it's very easy to take the cruelty of the game, especially personally when you die millimetres away from the end of a level. You signed up to try and be the guy, but that won't stop you from howling with fury when a pixel Mike Tyson murders you good and dead. Number 3. Demon's Souls Now, when you looked at the title of this video, you knew that one of From Software's evil babies would make it somewhere onto this list. After all, the whole thing is being painstakingly difficult by video game standards, almost requiring you to die several times just to learn specific enemy attack patterns. But let us not forget where the tormented originated. Dark Souls, Sekiro, Bloodborne, they're all difficult for sure, but by God, they're not as difficult and frustrating as Demon's Souls. And that's because Demon's Souls has concepts that, if added into a Dark Souls-esque game now, would make people lose their goddamn minds. This is a game that had a boss fight where, if you got hit by a specific attack, you'd actually lose an entire level that you'd furiously saved up souls to obtain. Could King Alant only use this move once? Of course not! He used it as many damn times as he damn well pleased, and you'd thank him for every one of them. Should you be trying to get into the Souls series, it might actually be an idea to work your way backwards through the series, as it's undeniable that the franchise's granddaddy is still the most hardcore. Number 2. Ghouls and Ghosts Now, Ghouls and Ghosts was made in 1985 and has continued to terrorise plucky players from then onwards. And this is exactly surprising for anyone who so much as sampled the game. The entire thing works on a Mario-esque life system, where one hit reduces you to a man in his underpants practically unable to defend himself, and ready to then be killed in a single extra hit. However, many of the enemies in this side-scroller are significantly harder to dodge than in Mario, moving across the entire screen erratically in order to make you blunder into their murderous grasp. The remastered version, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, manages to be exactly as difficult, with the only addition of a setting choice that allows you to set your lives per game. Should you especially hate yourself, you now have the ability to set said amount of lives to one. But I would definitely recommend counselling either before or after if you generally do this, but man, this is suffering like nothing else. And number one, Battletoads. Battletoads is a game that, even if you haven't played it, you still know how difficult it is. The only difference being is that if you haven't played it, you won't be talking about it with layers of concealed venom. Should you actually consider yourself a calm and controlled person, it might be worth testing that to its limits by giving this game a good old go. But just a reminder that no matter how cool or collected you consider yourself, you're not above getting really, really mad at a video game about radical toads. While most people fairly fixate on the uber-fast and hard-as-nails speeder bike section, it's it's not as though that this was the only area of challenge that you'd face while trying to complete this game. In fact, if you mention any of the ice sections, those marked with the curse of having played this game will likely react with the exact same amount of trauma as sliding all over the place is about as good for your dexterity as you'd expect. 
And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video games that wanted you to rage quit. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all my streaming and Warhammer Battle reports outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I don't want you to rage quit this video. I want you to go out there with a bit of extra positivity in your heart, because you, my friend, listening to this video are a massive ledge, and you deserve all of the best things in life, like love, happiness, and success and don't let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise all right i want to go out there and absolutely smash it today i believe in you as always i've been jules you have been awesome never forget that and i'll speak to you soon bye